Hi, Prince and Princesses. I'm Auntie Kay, and this is our children's Sabbath school program. And guess what? You are welcome to come along with me. Hello, Prince and Princesses, and welcome to a brand new Sabbath. Yes, indeed, one we've never seen before, one we've never experienced. And my prayer is that it's a blessed and enjoyable one. We are on lesson eight in our quarterlies. Yep, you should know by now. If you don't have it, now is the time to go and get your primary quarterly. And as I said, we're on lesson eight, and our topic today is appointment with God. My prayer is that we will always schedule time to be with our Heavenly Father through songs, through praise, through Bible study, just being in His presence. But you know, I'm so happy that all of you are here with me. And before we go any further, let us start with prayer. And we have Kezia. And of course, she's not primary school age, but she loves watching the Educate Children's Sabbath School program. And so she's here to pray for us. Princess Kezia Bear. Yes, she's called Kezi Bear. <laughs> she's going to pray for us at this time. Let's close our eyes and clasp our hands. It's prayer time. Happy Sabbath. So it's our opening prayer. So let us close our eyes and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful day that you've created. Dear God, thank you so much for everything you've done for us. And we pray that you bless us and keep us. And may we have an awesome day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye. I want to say thank you to Princess Kezia Bear for saying our opening prayer. Because we're never too big, never too small to work for our Heavenly Father. Thank you, my darling. And now it's time for us to hear our welcome. Hello and welcome to Andy Gay's Children's South School program where Prince and Princesses all around the world get to enjoy and learn about the love of God through sign language, messages with Princess Malloray, character teachers from Nails Made to Nuggets, Sing Along Time, Mary Versus, Story Hill with Princess Da Vincia, Test Your Knowledge with Quiz Kids, Hashtag Puzzle Fun, Enjoy Object Lessons with Auntie Patty Pat, Bible Questions with Ask Pass Vanessa, Great Crafty Crafts and Good Yummy Goodness with the Girls Tasty Treats. So, so, no matter where you're living on this great big planet, you are welcome to participate, enjoy, and share. Yes, we live far and wide, but God's love connects us. No matter how you look, where you're from, the color of your skin, or even your culture, welcome! So, now that we've been welcomed to Lesson 8, it's now time for us to learn and see and watch and hear how Princess Mollaray shares with us our message sign mm -hmm, of the day. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Let's sign together. The Sabbath is a day to learn more about God's love. The Sabbath is a day to learn more about God. Yes, indeed. That's our message of the day. And thank you, Princess Mallory, for signing it for us. And yep, 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 again, our message comes to us every week in our quarterlies. And it's right there. So after our message sign of the day, it's now time for us to enjoy some songs of praise. Moses led the crowd of Israel Out of Egypt saying no farewell At the Red Sea following their track Pharaoh's army rushed to take them back Lord God has split the waters drying their ground So his people crossed them safe and sound will also help me every day as he does for all who trust him and who will obey children let's sing this together Lord God has split the waters drying their ground so his people cross them safe and sound he will also help me Daniel did 
lions ceased to pray In the lions then was thrown away The sleepless king believed that he was dead But he found a thankful man instead This happens to us children as well sometimes, isn't it? Sometimes life is difficult, you see Even for the kids like you and me Let's remember that only lead a prayer He keeps promised and is always there
are royal Because we are royal We will do what's right We will do what's right Because we are chosen Because we are chosen We will love with all our might We will love with all our might Oh, oh, oh Because we are royal Because we are royal We will do what's right We will do what's right Because we are chosen Because we are chosen We will love with all our might We will love with all our might Oh, oh, oh Loves you and me. Jesus is our King. Jesus loves you and me. Jesus is our King. Jesus loves you and me. Jesus is our King. Jesus loves you and me. Oh oh oh. Let's sing. We are royalty. Oh oh oh. The King has chosen you and me. With my hand lifted up and my voice filled with praise with the heart of thanksgiving i will bless thee O oh lord yes it was sing along time where we got to send up the praises to our heavenly father yes indeed and now it's time for us to learn some character building tips from naya with his nature nuggets hi guys have you ever heard of the pink oleander flower? It is so beautiful. But did you know that it is not just for beautifying our homes? Here's what it can teach us. Number one, be cautious. Do you know that there are toxins in this plant which can kill animals? When a large amount is eaten the toxins affect the heart and nervous system it is also attractive yes so dangerous this reminds me of some of the things like shows and games that seem attractive but are dangerous be cautious number two spread joy beautiful flowers make many people smile this flower cheers me up whenever I see it. Do you cheer others up? Do people find joy being in your presence? Spread joy. Number three, embrace your growth. This flower is a fast growing plant which acts as an anchor plant and windbreaker. Sometimes growth and change can be scary, but it's part of life. Embrace your growth. As beautiful as it is, the pink oleander flower is such an amazing character teacher. You know the song that says, Building up the temple, building up the temple, building up the temple for my Lord. Yes, well, this is what Niall is helping us. He's helping to build up our character week by week with all the awesome tips and nuggets he shares with us through nature that our character can become better. Thank you so much, Prince Niall. And now, Princess Davincia. She's on her way to share with us our story for today. It's story time with me, Princess Davincia. Hi, boys and girls. It's story time. Appointment with God. Lisa came home from school on Friday. There was that wonderful smell again. Mm, mm, mm. Mom was baking bread for Sabbath. That sounds familiar. Lisa washed her hands and helped her mother finish the Sabbath dinner. Lisa loves Sabbath. I do too. What about you? 
This week after church, they were going to have lunch near a duck pond and then take a walk in the woods. Lisa couldn't wait. In today's story, Jesus and his disciples were taking a Sabbath walk too. Let's join them. Jesus loved the Sabbath. He loved to spend time with his friends and talk with them about the love of God. He loved to help people who were sick or feel sad feel better. One Sabbath, Jesus and his disciples passed through a field of grain. Jesus and the disciples were hungry. In those days, people had permission to eat food from another person's farm. If people were hungry and had no food with them, they could eat a few grapes in, the vine in a vineyard. Or they could pick some wheat stalks and eat the little kernels of grain. So, as Jesus' disciples walked through the field, they picked some stalks. They rubbed the heads of grain back and forth, back and forth in their hands. They probably did like this. When just the little kernels were left, they tossed the kernels into their mouths. The crunchy grain tasted good, but not everyone was happy. Pharisees nearby decided that the disciples were doing something wrong. They said to Jesus, When your disciples picked the wheat and rubbed it in their hands to get the kernels out, that was like a farmer working. So they are breaking the Sabbath. Seemed like they had a big problem. The Pharisees had taken God's beautiful Sabbath commandment and had made it into their own rule. They made up lots of extra rules that made the Sabbath a heavy burden. God wanted Sabbath to be a special day for people to enjoy. He wanted them to learn about his love. But because of these extra rules, many people did not enjoy the Sabbath. Jesus loved the, these Pharisees. He wanted them to know the joy of Sabbath too. Jesus asked them some questions to make them think. Do you remember David? He asked. One time, he and his men were very hungry, so they ate the special temple bread that was just really for the priest. The Pharisees knew about that. If that was okay, then eating grain on Sabbath is okay too. Jesus continued, People should not suffer on Sabbath. The Sabbath is for people. I know, for I am the Lord of the Sabbath. On Another Sabbath, while Jesus was in the synagogue, he saw a man whose hand was crippled. Jesus asked the people, What do you think? Is it right to do good on the Sabbath? Some of the people didn't think the man should be made well because it was the Sabbath. Jesus asked them another question to make them think. If one of your sheep fell into a home, wouldn't you pull it out? A person is so much more valuable than an animal, and that's true. Therefore, it is right to do good on the Sabbath. Then Jesus said to the crippled man, Stretch out your hand. The man's hand was completely healed. Jesus wants us to know that the Sabbath is a day for joy and healing. Sometimes children think that Sabbath is a do not day. Do not do this, do not do that, do not do this. Actually, the Sabbath is a day to do. On the Sabbath, we have more time to do something special, to do fun things that teach us about God's love. God created the Sabbath so together we can spend time with Him and learn more about his wonderful love. Happy Sabbath, boys and girls! I'm Princess Davincia, and thank you for joining me for Storytime. 
Thank you so much, Princess Da Vinci, for sharing our story with us. And guess what Auntie Kay forgot? The memory verse. And guess what? I think I forgot because I said I would be saying it for us this week. So here we go. Our memory verse for Lesson 8 says, For the Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. And we could find that in Matthew 12, verse 8. Yes. So I'm saying my memory verse for you all to realize that if I'm learning it, you can learn it also. Yes, indeed. And now, after our story time and our memory verse, it's now time for us to hear from Thim and Nathan. Yes, as they share with us what they would have learned. We are very happy to see you. Are you fine? Me and Nathan, we are very good. So Nathan, tell me, what is the Sabbath? The Sabbath is about, is a day for rest. Is a day to talk about Jesus of his love. Yes. And so others that Jesus is the Son of God and help the poor people. Yes, Nathan. Well, boys and girls, Nathan is right. Well, the message is very easy. Very easy. Well, boys and girls, remember that the Sabbath is a very special, special day to to learn about God's and love. And tell others about God. Yes. Bye. Thank you so much, Tim and Nathan, for doing a great job and sharing with us what you would have gotten and what you would have learned. And thank you for sharing it with us. It's now time for Quiz Kids. Yes, Quiz Kids. Jesus loved the Sabbath. He loved to spend time with his blank and talk to them about the love of God. Was it A, his cousins, B, parents, or C, friends? C, friends. Where was Jesus and his disciples walking by on the Sabbath and stopped? Was it A, at a manger, B, a field of grain, or C, a synagogue? B, field of grain. In the Bible days, people had to blank to eat food from another person's farm. What did they have? Was it A, permission, B, had to ask, or C, money? A. Permission Is Jesus Lord of the Sabbath? Is it A. No or B. Yes? B. Yes And after Quiz Kids, we know my now, yes, it's time for Hashtag Puzzle Fun. Mm -hmm. Appointment with God Puzzle Directions To find out something about the beginning of Sabbath, answer the following questions and fill in the answers in the spaces provided. Number 1. It shines in the day. That would be the sun. Number 2. It's the opposite of happy. That would be unhappy. Number 3. It's the opposite of old. <laughs> That's new. And for a parent's male child would be their son. We hair with it. I think that's one easy. It's air. And one plus one equals hmm two. What happens at the beginning of Sabbath? We have a beautiful sunset. Coming up right now is our Bible question with... Ask Pastor Nasa. Pastor Nasa, why does God have a form of a bird? Hey, thank you so much for that question. It's a really good one. Well, you know, in the book of Luke chapter 3 and verse 22, the Bible says, 
and the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven which said, You are my beloved Son, in you I am well pleased. You see, boys and girls, the Holy Spirit is just that. He is a spirit, so we can't see him with our natural eyes, but he can use his ability to come into the physical world so that we can see him. And he chose a dove to come down at the baptism of Jesus. All throughout time, a dove was seen as an innocent creature that brought peace. And so in this way, God was symbolizing and saying that Jesus was going to bring peace on earth. Isn't it so good to know that Jesus came to give you peace? He came to give peace to all the fighting and peace to all the families that are hurting and peace to all the boys and the girls who need to be satisfied in their hearts. And guess what? He can give you peace too. That's right. If you give your lives to Jesus today, he can come in and give you peace that will last forever. I want peace. How about you? Let's give our lives to Jesus today and he will give you peace too. See you next time. So, I don't know if you've noticed by now, sometimes our prince and princesses, they send in a Bible question with them, either saying it and sharing a video, and sometimes they just text it because they don't want to be on camera. But either which way, we love the questions coming in, whether it's emails or whether you send it by video. Thank you so much for the question, and thank you so much, Pastor Nassau, for being here to answer it. And now, we're heading over to Crafty Craft Corner, y'all. Yes, indeed. Get those crafty, crafty fingers ready. Stretch them out, because Aunt Polly's going to show us another terrific craft that goes with our story. that corn looked yummy yes indeed indeed it did thank you so much for sharing with us that cornerful <laughs> that's not a word <laughs> don't say that it's not a word <laughs> but thank you for showing us that crafty way of making corn thank you Aunt Polly and so now we have Aunt Ray she's coming up to share with us our mission story I'm excited <laughs> Thank you for joining us for another mission story. It's so wonderful to hear about how the lives of boys and girls all around the world are changed when they come to know our Savior Jesus Christ. Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. The title for today's story is Planting Seeds of Joy. When John was a small boy, father told him that God only has one church in Uganda. All other churches are fake, father said. When John went to church on Sunday, the priest warned him never to listen to sermons from any other churches. All other churches are fake, he said. John believed Father, and John believed the priest. But then he started to read the Bible after hearing a sermon 
by a Seventh-day Adventist preacher on the radio. The Bible showed that John and his family were keeping holy the wrong day of the week. John had been taught that Sunday, the first day of the week, was the Sabbath. But the Bible said that the seventh day of the week, Saturday, was the true Sabbath. John decided that it was more important to obey God than even Father and the priest. So he started to keep the seventh day Sabbath. Father and mother were angry when they saw that John, now a teenager, was keeping the seventh day Sabbath. They became even more angry when he decided to leave their church and become a Seventh-day Adventist. You were old enough to decide for yourself, Father said. Leave my house. Tears flowed down Mother's wrinkled cheeks. But she wasn't sad that Father was kicking John out of the house. She was upset that John had decided to become a Seventh-day Adventist. I would rather go to your funeral than see you join that church, she said. John felt very sad. He loved his parents very much. He liked living at home with them and his seven brothers. What could he do? He went to the house of a church elder, and with a heavy heart, he told the elder what his parents had said. The elder did not say a word when John was finished. Instead, he silently picked up a Bible from the table and opened it to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. He handed the Bible to John to read. John read the words of Jesus who said, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. John's heavy heart was lightened. The Bible was promising that if John made Jesus first in his life, then Jesus would provide everything that he needed. God was making a covenant with him that day. God was telling him to seek his kingdom and righteousness, and all other things would be added to him. John understood that he was making the right decision by choosing to obey God and keep the seventh day Sabbath. Even though John was still a boy, he needed to work in order to eat. He found someone who was willing to let him borrow some land and he planted a vegetable garden. He sold the vegetables that he grew to earn money. As he worked, he told everyone who would listen about his love for God. Five years passed, and John sensed that God was calling him to become a pastor. But how? He had only finished eighth grade and never gone to high school. The pastor at John's church decided to help him. He knew the principal of a nearby Adventist high school. Train this young man, John's pastor said to the principal. He will make a good pastor one day. After graduating from high school, John moved to another part of Uganda to work as a global mission pioneer. A global mission pioneer is a missionary who shares Jesus with people who have never heard about God in his or her own country. In nine months, John planted three new churches. Then church leaders offered John a scholarship to study to become a pastor at Bugema University, the Adventist University in Uganda. Today, John is a pastor and the manager of an Adventist World radio station in Uganda. He feels sad when he remembers how his father and mother treated him, but he is happy that he decided to follow God. He is happy that God has kept his promise in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, which says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. The persecution at home helped him grow closer to God. In addition, three of his seven brothers have become Adventists and are waiting with him for Jesus' soon coming. Boys and girls, this quarter's 13th Sabbath offering will help other young people like John to become witnesses for Christ. Part of the offering will help open a youth agricultural training center in Uganda. We thank you so much for your generous offering. Have a happy, 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 happy Sabbath. Thank you, Aunt Reese, for our story and for sharing it with us. That mission story was awesome. I love, I absolutely love hearing our mission stories. And now, talking about love, Princess Nikkel. Mmm, another princess that I love oh so dearly. She's coming to share with us a tasty treat.
love corn fritters. In Puerto Rico, rather than using corn, they use rice flour. Today, we will be making rice flour fritters called Almo Habanas. Let's get started. Our ingredients for today include rice flour, white flour, water, salt, cheese, baking powder, butter, milk, and eggs. You will also be needing two mixing bowls, a mixing spoon, a whisk, a tablespoon, and a pan with oil. Add your rice flour, baking powder, and salt to your large bowl and mix together. Whisk your eggs in your smaller bowl. Add your eggs to your larger bowl and whisk the mixture together. Slowly add your milk and water. Add your cheese and melted butter. Add your flour and then allow your mixture to rest for 20 minutes. Cook tablespoonfuls of your mixture until brown on both sides and drain before serving. I love going to Sabbath school class each Sabbath because I learn so much more about God's love. Why not share a batch of Almo Habanas with your Sabbath school class next week by asking? Rice flour fritters, anyone? Yummy, yummy in my tummy. <laughs> thank you so much, Mrs. Sticker, for another yummy, terrific recipe. Thank you. Mwah. And my prince and princesses, lesson eight appointment with God. It's done, it's over, which means we're moving on to lesson nine. And yes, we said the topic is appointment with God and remembering that our message said the Sabbath is a day to learn more about God's love. And our memory verse says, For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Matthew 12, verse 8. Yes. Oh, and one more thing. Our hashtag puzzle fun. We can always find it in our quarterlies. Also, it's right here. And did you know that all of these here are activities that you could do during the week? Yes, indeed. Our quarterlies are fun and they help us to learn so much more about our Heavenly Father and his great love for us. So until next week, be good prince and princesses. Yes, indeed. And remember, our Heavenly Father, He loves us oh so much and He wants to be in our lives. He wants for us to accept Him as our Lord and Savior. I love you, our Heavenly Father. Oh, He loves you oh so, so, so much also. Until next week, mwah, let's end with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in the heaven, hallowed be my name. Thou kingdom come, thou will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord's Prayer Happy Sabbath, everyone! Happy Sabbath, everyone! Happy Sabbath, everyone! Happy Sabbath! Happy Sabbath! Happy Sabbath.
Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Bye. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, everyone. And we'll see you all again next week.